Duplication glitches, or commonly known as dupes, are glitches or bugs in the game that allow a player the ability to duplicate items. Throughout the history of 2B2T, there have been numerous duplication glitches that have drastically changed the server, from dupe clients to tell coordinates to bases, to even players being cloned. This is the history of the major duplication glitches on 2B2T and how their discoveries have changed the server entirely. The first duplication glitch on 2B2T was discovered in mid-2011. On July 1st, 2011, one of the earliest videos recording this dupe was uploaded to YouTube. It eventually made its way onto 2B2T, permanently altering the server's item hierarchy. This dupe required 1 piston, 1 sticky piston, 13 redstone, and 3 redstone repeaters. This dupe could only duplicate blocks, but not items. It required a player to create a fast redstone clock, a type of circuit that sends a signal forever at specific intervals, using redstone dust and two repeaters. The player would then hook up an output from the clock with one redstone dust extending out from the clock and into two other circuits. One leads directly to a sticky piston, and the other leads to a repeater and normal piston. The player would then activate the clock by placing a redstone torch and quickly replacing it. This would cause both pistons to turn on and off forever. Now all the player had to do was set the repeater hooked to the normal piston to 3 ticks and place the desired block in front of the sticky piston, causing the blocks to dupe and extend outwards forever. Facepunch players would use this at their bases, and players like XCC2 would use it to dupe red wool blocks for the arch towers at a base called NFE. The next major dupe involved ghost items. It was first discovered in 2013 when a player named Kina Rana noticed that bows would leave behind ghost items when they would break. Right clicking these bows would cause them to disappear, but dropping it would duplicate the bows. Kina Rana felt like he had something on his hands, so he tried a variety of things, such as combining two bows in the inventory and enchanting a ghost bow in an anvil, but these attempts were fruitless. From his observations, these bows would act effectively as items, but the server would delete them as they were interacted with. Placing the bow into an item frame seemed to have a different process though. To his surprise, after placing the bow in an item frame and taking it out, the bow became a real item again. He thought that perhaps it was the distinction between using an inventory item and interacting with an entity. After this discovery, Kina Rana wanted to find an efficient way to dupe it in bigger quantities. He had heard of minecart dupes before, so he wanted to give it a shot. Initially, he tried the traditional method of taking items out, but that didn't work. He then attempted using hopper minecarts to take items out before and after going through a nether portal, but after numerous failed attempts, he tried using a hack module named FreeCam, and it worked. This allowed him to duplicate items tick perfectly as it went through the nether portal. He would then share the dupe with his base members at a base called Valkyria. And so Sato86, Kinarana, and Pyrobytes created a variety of duplication stashes using this dupe and further improved it to do more than just inconsistently duplicate single items. This dupe was culturally important to the server based on a few factors. The first was the presence of god items that Kina Rana previously created that allowed him to take more god items. The second was Kina Rana's presence at Valkyria. Since he shared the dupe with everyone at the base, his name was placed on the duplicated items, not just for him, but for everyone on the server. The third was the distribution of these items and the dupe to groups outside Valkyria, changing the meta of 2B2T such that god equipment became commonplace. The next dupe is one of the more unusual dupes to occur on 2B2T. This dupe allowed players to clone themselves. It was discovered on New Year's Day 2014 at a base called The Lands. One day when a player named ZarVR was spamming chats, he got kicked from the server. When he logged back in, in front of him was a duplicate of himself. The clone didn't do anything other than just standing idle. After realizing how weird this was, he showed his basemate, Jack the Ripper. They both started to theorize what the clone is and how to replicate it. Zarviar decided to kill the clone, and they dropped an exact duplicate of Zarviar's inventory, meaning that this could be a new dupe. However, they still had no idea how to replicate it. 
After experimenting with numerous methods, Jack the Ripper found a way by writing an entity and sending a chat message upon joining on the same tick. They would use a module called Greeter that would send a message the tick upon joining, at which point the server would kick you. It would still log you in, but you weren't actually in. So when Jack the Ripper rejoined after turning off his greeter, a clone would be made. They would tell everyone at the lands, and they would start duping. However, another discovery was made while duping clones. Duplicate characters of the group would show up in the player tab list with random numbers to the end of a player name, and everyone on the server could literally see that the group had over 50 accounts online. The clones wouldn't log off even after the group killed them. This would cause suspicion, but the group would say they bought alternate Minecraft accounts, and once the player counts got too high, the server would crash since the clones were registered as real players. The player clone dupe would last less than a week, as the owner of 2B2T, Housemaster, would patch it. Eventually, another dupe using minecart chests would be discovered in 2016. Using a minecart with a hopper or chest, a player would go through another portal, once it entered the nether, another player would stand near a hopper right outside of the nether portal in order to load the chunk. This would duplicate the items. The majority of the player base would use this and make items become less and less valuable. However, it was short-lived as it was patched a few days later, but another dupe would take its place. The 1111 dupe was considered one of the largest dupes to this point. It was discovered by Keener Rana in 2016 when he saw another player named Chunker spamming three messages in chats before disconnecting. He knew something strange was going on at the time, but he didn't know what exactly was going on. After Keener Rana communicated with the group Nerds Inc., he found out that Chunker was duping by dropping items, then disconnecting. Kinorana noticed that a lot more players were spamming three messages before disconnecting as well, and knew it was going to spread fast based on Chunker giving his code out like candy. An 11.11 client was made by Kinorana and another player named Clyde on September 19th. This client was purposely made to gather information from players to locate their bases. This was the second backdoor client that they created together, and was more sophisticated than the first. It was also under heavy scrutiny due to the distribution of this client and general public eye of 2B2T. With the press of a button, the client simply attempted to drop as many items as possible every game tick and required the player to disconnect manually. When they logged back on the server, the items would be duped. The client itself was unsophisticated, but worked effectively. Clyde had set up a server that recorded the information, and it made a simple HTTP POST request to that server with some simple information. The server it was duping on, the coordinates and dimension, and players' usernames. They decided it would cause more panic to leak the document than to use it themselves, as that would be less interesting. In total, the document had nearly 11,000 entries, and it was eventually patched by Housemaster on November 26, 2016, as the server was updated to Minecraft version 1.11. The 2017 Donkey Dupe was by far one of the biggest dupes due to its use of shulker boxes, outranking even the 1111 dupe, and it was one of the seven major exploits Keenorana and his friend Mason discovered in 2017. They discovered it when they were doing numerous experimentations at the time due to two major factors, the 2B2T market and illegal items. As such, Kina Rana and Mason were discovering a lot of glitches and doing a lot of observations that Kina Rana would later put into code for his custom client, Nova. The donkey dupe was discovered not accidentally, but through these experimentations. It worked by getting a donkey to have a heart and putting shulker boxes of items in its inventory. After that, the donkey was sent through another portal to die by a cactus on the other side. The contents would then spit back to the overworld, meaning that it was duped. The exact reason as to why it worked is unknown, but sending entities through the nether causes the nether to briefly load with no players. Keenorana believes that this loading slash unloading process caused the items to dupe, not wanting to lose on the opportunity, and knowing it was soon to be completely public, Keenorana and Mason leaked it on YouTube in an attempt to gain subscribers. The dupe only lasted 3 days, yet managed to devalue even stacked armor as players used it to get more stacked gear. A few weeks after the donkey dupe, another dupe called the crafting dupe was discovered. 
It was discovered on Minecraft's Paper Spigot Issue Tracker. When the server updated to Minecraft version 1.11 to 1.12, the server was on a temporary map for quite a while. Alpha Computer had set up stashes around the server with different illegal items in different forms. Some of them were stored in shulker boxes inside item frames, others in minecart chests, and others stored in zombie hands. It was very widely known that the illegals were going to get removed eventually due to a reddit post, so they prepared it this way. Alpha Computer had, however, kept a few at a stash he was logged out at so that they could test immediately after the original map came back. When the original map came back, there was no restrictions for about an hour, so they were able to do whatever they wanted, including opening a chest with an illegal item without harm. About 30 minutes after the server came back up, Chunker posted in the Spawn Mason's Discord saying, New dupe, and posted a gif of him performing the duplication glitch. In the Discord, a player named 0x22 and Alpha Computer were in a private voice chat to test the exploit, and to their surprise, it worked. Alpha Computer then performed it with several different items at a stash, including 32k swords. Alpha would then send Kinarana this picture. When Kinarana saw it, he couldn't believe his eyes, but after a few minutes, he spotted certain details that made him believe otherwise. In the picture, Alpha Computer has stacks of 63, and Kinarana knew that Alpha Computer didn't have the patience to intentionally place not full stacks, so Kinarana knew then that it was real. This initiated a call, and Alpha Computer showed Kinarana how to perform the exploit. To perform it, you had to drop the item that the player wanted to dupe, and then quickly spam click on any crafting recipe in the book, which would transfer blocks from your inventory into the small crafting interface in your inventory screen. When the player picked up the desired item while still spam clicking on the recipe in the book, a glitch would happen where the item would immediately stack to 64. This would even stack items that are normally unstackable, such as armor, weapons, tools, shulker boxes, etc. The dupe was quickly patched on July 24th, 2017 by Housemaster, and he classified these stacks of unstackable items as illegals, preventing any items going above 64 from going in chest or or on the ground without resetting. A few years later, another powerful dupe would be discovered. The 2019 chunk dupe was widely regarded as one of the most powerful dupes on the server. You could have as many chests as you want in a chunk and dupe it with ease. Even at my ungrieved base in the millions, I used it with my friend EnderMQN. Nobody knows who discovered it, but it worked by overloading a chunk with large file sizes, preventing the chunk from being saved. This was usually done with large text characters with multiple books. You could change any portion of a Minecraft chunk, but if you unloaded and reloaded the chunk, it would revert. This was usually accomplished by building a tunnel, reloading your chunks at the end, and then returning to the duped chunk. However, the dupe was eventually patched on February 23rd, 2019, after the dupe caused massive lag on the server. Similar to previous donkey dupes, the 2019 portal donkey dupe used donkeys at 1 HP and then pushing them into an end portal at a high distance with items in their chest. The donkeys would fall through the end portal and die at the same time, with the original and duped items appearing on the other side. This dupe was originally discovered in 2017 by a YouTuber named Flashy, and it was theorized to work on spigot servers like 2B2T. The dupe became widespread in February when Team Wayo leaked it in a YouTube video. This caused players to camp the end portal from dupers and was patched a few weeks later. However, another dupe was discovered shortly after. Around April of 2020, during a spawn event known as the Bakery, there was a very high demand for furnaces. The current dupe at the time, which was the end portal donkey dupe, was very slow and could not meet the demand of nearly 5 double chests of furnace shulkers per day. The solution was for the organizers of the Bakery, known as the Brown Men, consisting of Redstoner 2B2T, Steve3, and Mahan, to find a better dupe. After a few hours of experimentation, they found the donkey minecart dupe. This dupe worked by keeping a donkey's inventory open client side as it was pushed into unloaded chunks while riding a minecart, then taking the items out of the inventory window on your screen. The reason why this was so powerful at the time was that it could be done over and over again without killing the donkeys. 
the doggy gets pushed back to its starting position, and then the process repeats. This dupe never went public, but caused enough suspicion that it was patched near the end of April. As a result, Housemaster made it so donkey inventories close automatically when they are unloaded. Around the end of July 2020, and after running out of all the items produced by the donkey minecart dupe, the brown man drastically needed another dupe. However, Housemaster had patched all methods of unloading a ridden donkey, which is what all god mode dupes were based on. Steve 3 used his knowledge of Java to find some exceptions to this rule. After about an hour, the final conclusion was found. Other entities connected to an entity stack that the player was a part of would not be considered by Housemaster's plugin, allowing them to unload and go into a god mode state. To put it simply, an entity stack is multiple entities mounting each other, such as a player riding a donkey while riding a boat. The result from god moding the entity stack and logging out was the boat and donkey that was not being ridden getting duped. This is because they became in a god mode state and got saved to the chunk while the entire entity stack logged out with the player. This was used for many months privately, and was also used to supply events like No Server November and large projects such as the Infinity Incursion Water Cube. At the start of September in the voice chat at Avilacium, Redstoner mentioned being able to supply the base in the future with a dupe. A member named Dr. Beerstash supposedly went on a rampage about not having a dupe and promptly left the base discord. A player known as Ironar, who is his accomplice and a well-known client developer who was also very upset about the fact that others had found a dupe instead of him. He then spent the next two weeks trying to figure out the dupe, testing everything, and eventually finding it based on information he could get from Redstoner, Steve3, and Mahan. Noah J3, who was Ironar's friend that helped discover it, made a simple agreement with him, share it with no one. As soon as this happened, Ironar leaked it to Dr. Beardstash. Then a conflict occurred with Noah 3J, leading to Ironar leaving the group and plans to blow up the base. This dupe was one of the first to utilize auto duper clients on a mass scale. Because of the access complexity of all of the steps, Steve 3 made an auto dupe on the private brownware clients around August, and INR had similar ideas. A private version of a hack client known as Pyro was developed with the auto duper in it. However, it had fewer functions compared to Steve 3's, as such, not being able to automatically send donkeys to kill chambers and not being as fast. This didn't concern Ironar, as he was planning to sell the dupe on his new client, Pyro. After learning of Ironar and Dr. Beardstash's plan to nuke all three current bases from iHack X videos, Noah 3J gave coordinates to multiple stashes and map arts belonging to Ironar and Dr. Beardstash after Avalonia members evacuated all three major bases with their supplies. This counter-strike was a surprise and blow to Ionar, and on September 28th, he dropped the auto dupe publicly with the release of version 1.4.1 of his client. After the wider community had been starved from a dupe for over 7 months, Ionar got what he wanted, but at what cost? His reputation had been badly damaged, and multiple stashes belonging to him and Dr. Beardstash got blown up in revenge. The dupe lasted publicly for nearly two months because the actual method was not public. The pyro client was unclear, meaning the steps could not be determined from the code. This affected Housemaster as well, since he is unable to spectate any god mode dupe. If he loads a chunk, the dupe will just fail. However, this all came to an end on November 23rd, after an unknown player gave Housemaster the Brownman auto duper source code that had been ported to another hack client named Kami. Housemaster would patch the dupe two days later on November 25th, and as a result of all of this, Housemaster updated the god mode patch so that it checks every entity on the entity stack and deletes all entities that want to be unloaded, patching the god mode state, and is likely to be the last 1.12 donkey dupe. Today, there are currently no public duplication glitches. However, it isn't to say that there are most likely private dupes that are most likely even more powerful than the dupes talked about in this video. When 2B2C updates above 1.12.2, what's to say that there will not be a handful of dupes for everyone to use? Until then, we will have to wait and see.